Hey guys, Mrs. Dans here. So today we will be working with the volume of cylinders, cones, and spheres. Nicely enough, these formulas are given to us on our reference sheets. So let's take a quick look at that. Over on the right side, we talked about the volume of general prisms, right, is capital V for volume equals capital B times H. Remember that the capital B really stands for area of a base. That could actually also be used for a cylinder. The area of the base is the circle, and then we multiply by the height. But like I said, nicely enough, they actually give us the formula. So right here, this part of the formula, pi r squared, we did it yesterday. It's area of a circle. So honestly, it is capital B, it's area of the base, times the height. But if you recognize something as a cylinder, uh, you could just look at this formula sheet and use it to help you find the volume of a cylinder. We will also today be doing a cone. Honestly, a cone's volume is super similar to a cylinder's volume. You see this part of it, pi r squared h, is right here, pi r squared h. The only difference is this one third. And that's because the volume of a cone really is one third the volume of a cylinder. What it means is that three cones will fit inside of a cylinder. And then lastly, we will be doing a sphere. And the formula for sphere is volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. So be really careful about this r cubed. Sometimes we get used to doing the r squared. Just make sure you're looking at your formula sheet carefully. When you use formulas, you must write the formula first, show your substitutions, and then use your calculator. So we'll do a few problems together, and then you'll be able to start on your homework. So on the handout that you received, we're actually going to start with number seven. So number seven is a cylinder. So we will use the formula V equals pi R squared H. And you just have to recognize the parts of your cylinder so that we could substitute the numbers in in the appropriate places. So I first just want to point out the directions very quickly. It asks us to find the volume of each figure around to the nearest 10. I want you to make sure you're showing the work the way that I show it. We're actually going to first show it in uh, exact form, which means we're leaving our answers in terms of pi, and then after we leave it in terms of pi, we will then round it to the nearest tenth. You'll understand what I mean when I do it with you. So when we substitute in our information, I'm leaving pi, and in place of r, we can see that from the center of the circle to the edge is five, so that's a five squared, and the whole height of this cylinder is 11. So I had said that I wanted to leave an exact answer, which means I'm leaving my answer in terms of pi. What that means is that I'm not going to push the pi button just yet on my calculator. I want to just take care of the numerical calculations. So I want to do 5 squared times 11. 5 squared, remember, is 25 and then we multiply it by 11. If you want to enter the five squared, make sure you're using your parentheses, and then multiply by 11. Honestly, though, you could just type in 55 times 11. Turns out, not 55, sorry, 25 times 11, and it turns out to be 275. So I say that my exact volume is 275 times pi, right? That's exact because I didn't round pi. But they're asking me to round to the nearest tenth. 
So now I'll use my calculator again and do 275 times pi. And I get to the nearest tenth, 863.9. So rounded, 863.9. Let's just write down our units also. MI is for miles, so this would be miles cubed. Remember volume, the units are cubed. So this is the answer to the question but I will always first put my exact answer. Also remember that you have different modes on your calculator. If um, your calculator is not giving you this decimal answer, make sure you change your mode, you hit the mode button, and remember there's a classic and there's a math print. The math print leaves the pi in your answer. The classic will change it to um, a decimal. So change your calculator mode now if you need to. So next we're going to try volume of a cone. So we're going to go to number six. So this cone is actually laying down. Um, a cone upright could look like this, right? Like an ice cream cone. The reason why I'm pointing that out is so that you don't get confused about what the radius is and what the height is. So the radius of the circle is the four inches, and the height of the cone is the eight inches. A lot of times we put the height on the outside. Uh, many times they also do this dashed line inside to show how tall the cone is. Anyway, the formula for volume of a cone, remember, is one-third the volume of a cylinder, so pi r squared h. Again, all of this is on your reference sheet. You do not need to memorize these formulas. You have to write the formula, and then you have to show me your substitution. So we leave the one-third. We leave the pi, we replace the radius with the 4, and it gets squared, and we replace the height with the 8. Again, I want to do the numerical calculations. So I'm going to just bring down this pi for my exact volume. And in my calculator, I'll take care of the one-third, the four squared, and the eight. Now, if your calculator is in math print, it will do your fractions very nicely. If it's in classic mode, um, the fractions won't turn out as nice. Like right here, I have my fraction uh, feature which a lot of you tend to like when it comes to fractions. I'm going to do one-third times four squared. Instead of typing in four squared, I'm going to multiply that in my head. Four times four is 16. Just save myself some keystrokes, times eight. So uh, it's like I'm in math print, so I could do one-third times 16 times eight. And look, since I'm in math print, I get 128 over 3. So my exact answer is 128 over 3 pi. Now, if I change my calculator to classic, I can now enter this in to see what my decimal answer is. So we need to be in classic mode to get that decimal answer. And I need to remember what a fraction means. To get my rounded answer, 
I really, on my calculator, want to type in 128 divided by 3, right, because that's what a fraction means. And then whatever that answer is, I'll then multiply it by pi. So here I go, 128 divided by 3. And I'm going to hit Enter right now. And then that answer I'm going to multiply by pi, and I'll hit the pi button. So my rounded answer to the nearest tenth is 134.0. If I write down my units, it would be inches cubed. So I think maybe the trickiest part of this is using your calculator. You can skip this exact answer, um, definitely on today's sheet, because it's not asking us for an exact answer. So how can I go from this substitution here, where v equals one-third times pi times four to the second times eight, and be in classic mode, right? Because classic mode doesn't show our fractions. So what you can do is, I'm just showing you some calculator tips. Uh, with the one-third, think of this being multiplied by pi over one, and being multiplied by four to the second over one, and multiplied by eight over one. So a real easy way of entering the one-third times pi times four to the second times eight on your calculator and get the decimal answer right away is actually just do all of the numerators. I want to enter this into my calculator and then at the end divide by three. Watch what I mean. I will enter one times pi times four to the second, which really is 16, times eight. And I'll hit enter. I get that decimal. Keep that decimal on your screen and then hit divide by three. Enter. And there I go. I get my decimal answer of 134.0. That's probably the easiest way of using your calculator for volume when there's a fraction involved. So multiply all the numerators, hit enter, and then divide by that three. So let's do the sphere and use that method on our calculator of entering all the numerators and then dividing by three. Let's move to number two. Number two is our sphere. So volume of a sphere, V equals four thirds pi R to the third power. We show our substitutions. The only thing that I have to substitute is the R. Remember R stands for radius, but this line goes all the way across. They gave me the diameter half the diameter would be six. All right, so we have to use our calculator properly. I remind myself that this is like over one, this is like over one. So in my calculator, I'll do the numerators being multiplied, and in the end, I'll divide by three. I really think that's the easiest way of using your calculator. So four times pi times, I'm going to use my parentheses and type in six to the third power, because I don't know what six to the third power is in my head, and hit enter. Leave that number on your screen, and now hit divide by three. It's 904.8 if I round correctly. Let's put our units, it would be centimeters cubed. This is the rounded answer. Again, you might be asking, Mrs. Sands, how come you're not just entering the fraction four thirds? 
If you enter the fraction 4 thirds, uh, you're going to want your calculator in math print. When your calculator is in math print, it doesn't multiply by pi. It leaves pi on your screen. So I'm giving you the best method for getting a rounded answer. Um, are there other ways of getting this rounded answer? There are. And if you're savvy enough with your calculator and you can figure out uh, a way of doing it that you like better, fine with me. But this is how I'm showing you um, on the screen today. Uh, I want to do three more problems that are on the back of this sheet. Notice the back of this sheet is still finding a volume of cylinders, uh, cones, and spheres, but it's in words instead. So let's just do 11, 12, and 13 as three more practice problems, and then you'll be able to do the rest on your own. All right, so number 11 is a sphere. It's mandatory to write down the formula first. 4 thirds pi r to the third power. Show your substitutions. The only substitution I have to make is the radius. It says the radius is 11. I'm going to use that method of my calculator where I enter my numerators and then divide by 3. So 4 times pi times in parentheses 11 to the third power. Keep that number on your screen. Hit divide by 3. 5,575.3 when rounded to the tenth spot. 55.73, I mean 55.75.3. inches to the third power. Number 12, a cone V equals one-third pi R squared H. Show the substitutions, keep the one-third, keep the pi, in place of R. Here it says the radius is six. In place of H, here it says the height is 12. Think of these over 1 so that I can enter in just the numerators and then divide by 3. 1 times, I really don't need that 1 obviously, but I'll put it, pi times in parentheses 6 to the second power times 12, keep that number on your screen, divide by 3, 452.4, and that is meters to the third power. One more problem with me, um, I want to do number 13, which is a cylinder. V equals pi r squared h. So V equals pi. The radius is 8. The height is 12. No fractions here. Just enter this straight in your calculator. Pi. Um, you can even skip the multiplication signs if you're going to use parentheses properly. And I get 2412.7. 2412.7. Put your units, yards, to the third power. All of this is volume, so all of our units are to the third power. So you're just going to complete this worksheet, both front and back. It's mandatory to show me the formula used, your substitutions, and then your final answer. So 
I'll see you soon. Have a good day. Bye.